Hi there, this is Alan Carroll. Those of you who have made a story map realize that there are two elements to effective storytelling. One is, is learning the mechanics of our builder function and how story maps work. But the other is perhaps even more important, which is just creating an effective story, an effective narrative. We've looked at thousands of stories and created probably hundreds of our own. And over the years, we've come to uh, realize there are a few pointers that we think can, can help you along the way to uh, effective storytelling. And we distilled it from probably 9,000 down, uh, down to nine steps to great storytelling. So let's uh, run through them kind of quickly in the interest of time. Uh, so first I used to uh, tell people that you could create a story in, uh, in 20 minutes, which you can, but it's not gonna be a good story. So just realize ahead of time that this is gonna take an investment. It's gonna be an iterative process, but a fun creative process. So uh, once you're into it, uh, one thing to think about is to start with a bang. Um, you don't wanna just have a dull label style head, headline or title. Um, you'd like to, ideally you can choose and, and come up with an evocative uh, creative title that really lures people into the story. And better yet, if that title can work with the image that it goes with, in this case, it's a looping video of a, of a starry sky, which beautifully complements a, a nice evocative title. Here's another example that I think is really effective as, uh, and a way of starting with a bang. So instead of something saying something like the refugee plight that we're facing, et cetera, et cetera, it shows uh, this, this really lovely silhouetted image uh, that goes very nicely, <clears throat> both in terms of the topic, but also even the position of the title with the, uh, uh, with the, title, the title and the image, in other words, go really well together. Second is to think about adding a hero. By the way, not all of these pointers will apply to all of your stories, but where possible, thinking about adding a hero or heroes, I think is an important uh, thing to consider. So in other words, people love people. People love learning about people uh, more in many cases than a kind of abstract topic. So if you can draw people into your narrative or feature people as, uh, as kind of center points of your, your narrative, then I think you're better off. Um, an example here that of course of several heroes is a beautiful story that the Grand Canyon Trust did of uh, featuring tribal people and talking about their deep uh, cultural ties to, uh, to, the, to the Grand Canyon as essentially a sacred space. Your hero doesn't necessarily have to be a human being. I'm a birder, so perhaps I have a particular weakness for this, but this is a story that, uh, that beautifully focused on the life cycle and the, the amazing kind of migratory annual cycle of a semi-palmated sandpiper, a very modest looking bird that among other things flies for several days nonstop across huge stretches of ocean. The story is basically about the conservation of its stopover points along its migratory route, but by featuring a particular bird, you really kind of identify with the bird and its, its miraculous life history. Number three, give your story rhythm. Um, so often, if, you've, if your story has several sections, you might try to repeat that uh, a, a basic structure. So for instance, when I did a story on religious pilgrimages, I, tr I, I started each section with a big image, then a large map, then a longer text with a series of smaller images. And it's, it sets up a pattern that people quickly become comfortable with. Whether they're conscious of it or not, I'm not sure, but I think it works. Uh, we also did a story called Wealth Divides. And so we featured a half dozen US cities, but we for each one, we went through the same kind of sequence of map imagery, maps, photos, et cetera. Number four is create a little world. And by that, I mean, try to unify or tie together the, the sort of mood and editorial focus, but also the visuals of your story into a really unified whole. Sometimes that means getting rid of things rather than adding things. So in this case, uh, the authors of this story on Menhaden essentially got rid of the whole color palette except for black and white and a, a single bright red. They eliminated most labels from maps, made their graphics very simple. And the, the result is something that I think is really effective and evocative. We did a similar sort of thing with a story on the two Koreas. In this case, we used two color schemes, one representing North Korea, the other South Korea, that we could use in infographics and in the maps themselves and a timeline, et cetera, to tie the story together. You can, of course, use uh, Esri's, uh, uh, I'm sorry, ArcGIS, on, uh, ArcGIS story maps um, builder function and uh, 
and theme builder to create a really unified look. So we've got, of course, these preset themes that with a single click, you can kind of uh, change the, the look and feel of your story. But with the theme builder, you can also get much more particular about choosing color palettes and, and choosing among hundreds and hundreds of different fonts to create just the kind of little world that, uh, that suits your story. Next, one size doesn't fit all. And by that, I mean literally screen sizes. So of course, our story maps are, are responsive and they work really well on a variety of screen sizes. But of course, the story will be affected by that screen size. Sometimes images will be cropped, things like that. Uh, fortunately, within the builder, there's a way to easily preview how your story is going to look at various screen sizes. And it's, uh, we, we recommend that you use that frequently in, during the building of your story and do things like adjust the focal point of images so they aren't cropped uh, if, uh, on, say, a mobile device. Next, think big, think small. And this time around, I'm not talking about screen size, but I'm talking literally about the elements of your story. So a, a story we did back in the era of the classic apps called The Cost of Beef um, talked about the environmental impacts of the beef industry. And we used uh, uh, world maps to, to give an overview. But of course, that kind of separates it from the everyday reality of things happening on the ground. So we also zoomed in on these industrial scale abattoirs and showed uh, quite dramatic images of feedlots to give a, a more visceral kind of local sense of the impact of, uh, of the beef industry. Um, so it's it's wise to think about using active and passive maps. And what I mean by that is that often we assume that every map needs to be interactive, but they don't. And in fact, a lot of people, a lot of casual readers don't bother to interact with maps. So often static maps are more effective um, also in that they can show, you can include in, the, in that map only what you want your readers to know and not have them be distracted by additional uh, content that's irrelevant to the story. Our um, Express Map Builder is an easy way to do that. So you can, can uh, very easily and intuitively create relatively simple maps that show things like a series of points or a route or a, area, a set of areas. Uh, next, keep it short and sweet. So we all love our topics and it can be tempting to go on and on, but uh, the, the the internet can be a kind of a, attention deficits disorder sort of medium. People aren't used to sitting there for hours and hours reading your story. So it's best to uh, best to try to shorten your story as much as possible. This was a story that included something like a hundred different locations in the uh, former Glen Canyon before it was drowned by it, by the big dam. And that's just probably, probably you're, you're probably gonna lose people if you have that many sections to your story. So a story we did on, uh, on spaceports, we could have featured a lot more spaceports, but we decided it's better to leave people hungering for more rather than overwhelming them with too much. So we just chose the spaceports that we thought were of the greatest significance. Um, finally, it's important to end your story with a call to action. So story maps are about inspiring people, informing them, uh, making them want more or want to do more. And so you don't want to leave them hanging. So it's important to at least have a link to additional information. Here's a really nice example from Protect Our Winters that gave a whole uh, series of different uh, uh, options for people to, uh, to follow through on. So uh, please do, uh, if you're inspiring people, please do lead them to, uh, to more and better things that they can do. That's basically it. We're gonna put the URL of this in the uh, chat window and we hope you can uh, perhaps uh, take some more time to read through the whole narrative. Thanks very much.